if you could make a start, please. <coughs> Hey, yeah, thanks very much, uh, convener. Uh, firstly, welcome to the meeting of the Pension Subcommittee of the Pension, uh, City Governance Committee and Pension Board. It's been held remotely and also been recorded. Taking you on to the, the main introduction. Should any member need to leave the meeting for any reason, can they please use the meeting chat to advise of this? If a meet member loses their connection, they should make every effort to rejoin the meeting, but if this is not possible, then I will note their absence for the, the remainder of the meeting. If you have to leave the meeting due to a declaration of interest, you should remain out of the meeting until invited back in by the committee officer. Would all members please mute their microphones when not speaking to avoid background noise? Please start the meeting with your camera on. Your face will appear on the screen when you are speaking. If your connection is poor, you may wish to turn off your camera and see if this improves it. If this doesn't help, you may wish to quickly leave the meeting and rejoin. If you wish to ask a question or speak on any item, please do so by typing into the meeting chat and the chair will then invite you to speak. Although we are operating a different way, this is still a formal meeting of the Pension Subcommittee and the Pension Board and the required standards of behaviour and discussion are the same as in a face-to-face -face meeting. Unless otherwise agreed, standing orders will apply to proceedings and the terms of the Council's Code of Conduct will apply in a normal way. Can I also remind members that the press and public are invited to attend this meeting? The nature of this meeting makes it impossible to take a vote by way of a show of hands. For that reason, it is proposed that all decisions are, that are required will be taken by means of a roll call vote. To agree this, I require agreement for at least two thirds of the members present. Can I ask any member that disagrees with this proposal to open their microphone and indicate their dissent? Finally, I would ask that members do not admit any persons waiting in the lobby into the, the meeting. I will now take a roll call of the members of the Pension Subcommittee and Pension Board for the purposes of the minute, and I would ask if members would confirm their presence when I call their names. Hey, Bailey Sowers. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Lynn. Present. Thank you. And Councillor Rome. I've received apologies from Councillor Rome. Hey, uh, Councillor McCurvin. Is Councillor McCurvin present? I think Mark. it's normally Councillor McHugh. I think okay. Councillor McIrvin's on this committee. Okay. Yeah, thanks very much. It was listed this on next. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McHugh present. He, sorry, apologies from Dorothy McHugh. Okay, thank you very much. And Councillor Creighton. I am here. Okay, thank you very much. And the Pension Board uh, members, George Ramsey. Present. Councillor Donaldson. Present. Mr. Duff. Present. Kenny Dick. I'm here. Claire Shepherd. Is Claire Shepherd present? No mark them as absent. Arthur Nicol. Arthur Nicol present. Mark them as absent. And finally, Raymond Boyd. It's Raymond Boyd present. Mark then as absent at this time. We would now move on to the main agenda. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Kevin, Kevin Keenan here. I'm not sure I was called at all, but it might well oh. be you've got Councillor McCurvin down and, instead of myself. Yeah, apologies for that. This is how it appeared, appeared on the note, and I'll get that connected. Thanks very much. And I'll note that you're present, Bailey Keenan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, item one is declaration of interest. Are there any declarations? The item two then is apologies, and if there's any further apologies to be intimated, could these be placed in the chat function? Okay. You then have item three, which is a minute of the previous meeting. This is for approval. Would that be agreed? Yeah, that's agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Item four then, before we use the Tayside Pension Fund Risk Register, this is for approval. So this is reviewed on a quarterly basis, reported on to reflect levels of current risk. Uh, members are asked to approve and note no changes to the risk profile since the previous report. Agreed? Agreed, yeah. Oh, Michael, you have a question? Michael, it's creating, I think you're on mute. 
Thank you. Um, cheers. Uh, no, it's just a quick thank you. It's just a quick question in relation to the risk levels. Um, obviously, we've seen they're kind of moderate um, on our list. Is this something seen across the board in terms of other pension funds that um, are comparable um, to our one? Tracy, can you pick that up, please? Yes. Um, thank you. Good question. Um, I, I would assume so. All pension funds have generally the same um, types of risk and the, the same elements in the risk registers and um, th there would only be difference, you know, differences if different pension funds were um, facing different challenges, if they had, you know, turnover or, you know, something specific going on in that, that fund. Yeah, no, no, thanks. I know, I know every pension fund has risk and I, I appreciate that. Um, it's just, um, I was wondering if there's any comparisons, but um, no, thank you. Okay, um, moving on please, Willie. Yeah, thank you very much. Item five then, before his pension administration performance quarterly update to 30th of September. This is for noting. Any questions or comments on that? So agreed. Okay, thank you. Take show on to item six then, convener Teesside Pension Fund accounts. You have three reports before you for information, and I believe that external audit are present. Speak to that item with them to introduce themselves when it comes to that particular item. Who's speaking to that? I, oh. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wojciech Kuzma. I'm a senior auditor with Audit Scotland. I will be filling in for Brian Howard today. So I will speak to our external audit report. OK, on you go then. Thank you. Oh, OK. Um, so um, our papers are starting on um, one, uh, page 161. And that's a brief summary. Um, of, of what we're presenting to you today. In paragraph one uh, on that page, we said that the audit is substantially complete, subject to the receipt of revised set of annual accounts for final review. I can confirm the revised set has now been received and we concluded that element of our audit with no issues. Then the annual audit report contains specific matters arising from the audit of financial statements, as well as our conclusions um, on the audit of wider scope areas. As noted, we'll, uh, we will issue the final version of the report after the accounts are signed. Um, then the unjust misstatements, I'm pleased to say we have none to report to you. And then in paragraph seven, um, I would like to highlight that we seek confirmation from those charged with governance of any instances of any actual suspected or alleged fraud and subsequent events that have occurred since the date of financial statements or material non-compliance with laws and regulations affecting the entity that should be brought to our attention. Um, if there is nothing to report to us right now, can I please ask this request and responses minuted? Um, and if you become aware of any such instances, please contact engagement lead directly. So that will be Brian Howarth to discuss the matter. And um, lastly, on the summary page, uh, on page 162, um, we also seek written representations from the responsible officer and the draft letter is attached to Appendix B, which should be signed and returned to us together with the annual accounts prior to the independent auditor reports being certified. So moving on from page 163 to page 166 in your papers is the copy of the independent auditor's report. In summary, the opinions are uh, the opinions are not modified, which is the outcome you seek. Uh, so that's good news. From page 167 to page 170 in your papers uh, is the previously mentioned draft letter of representation that we seek. I'm not going to talk you through through it, but if it helps, I can pause now in case you have any specific questions on these papers so far. OK, thanks for that. Do members have any questions or comments? I'm not seeing any indications, so. 
OK, thank you for this. Um, in this case, let's move on to the annual audit report. So that starts on page 171. Um, page 175 in your papers contains the key message, messages, which are la largely positive. In section one of our report, starting on page 179 in your papers, um, I would like to know that the materiality levels were revised after receiving the draft accounts and reduced compared to what we presented in the annual audit plan, but the changes weren't significant. Worth noting that we have no significant audit matters to report to you following our audit. We obtained sufficient and appropriate audit uh, assurances over the identified risks of material misstatement reported in our, in our annual audit plan and shown here in Exhibit 3. And we have not identified any misstatements above our reporting threshold. A couple of positive messages um, I would like to highlight are well, first of all, good progress made on implementing prior year audit recommendations identified by the predecessor auditor. And the second one is the cash flow projections within the management commentary. I think specifically within the fund statistics, um, which we recognize as a good practice to have that included. And this also links to the point above, as this was recommendation that uh, made by the previous auditor. So really pleased to see implement uh, this implemented. Um, and it shows the expected position of the fund over the next 10 year period. Moving to section two in our report, uh, financial management on page 183 in your papers. One area I will point out in this section um, is the recommendation on page 185, which we think will improve your control environment. This relates to ad hoc payments such as lump sums and debt benefits which are calculated on all tier system. But there is a there is no reconciliation between this pension system and the general ledger. The purpose of this recommendation is to ensure completeness and accuracy of these payments so that all the transactions or events that should have been recorded in the ledger are recorded. Having said that, our conclusion is that they say pension fund has appropriate financial control arrangements in place, um, including arrangements for prevention and detection of fraud and errors and during our audit uh, of final accounts, uh, when we tested the lump sums and, and, and debt benefits and, and other ad hoc payments, we have not um, identified any issues. Moving on to page uh, 186 in your papers, this is section three on financial sustainability. Overall, we have no concern over the arrangements for financial sustainability. The previously mentioned good practice regarding cash flow projections um, included in management commentary shows the net draw on the fund from dealing with members over the 10 year period, but also outlines the investment income is expected to more than match it. We noted that the investment strategy has been reviewed and is being implemented, which will further diversify your portfolio of investments and spread the, ri spread the risk of loss. We know that um, the overall membership level have increased, but the ratio of active members, so those who are contributing to the fund uh, compared to pensioners, those who are drawing from the fund, has steadily reduced over the five year period. This is important to note because you are paying more than receiving contributions. Again, this links to the cash flow projection, which shows the importance of income from investments, which will increasingly be needed to pay pensions. As concluded in paragraph 41 in our report, there is no immediate need to consider investment changes, but I think it's worth highlighting this for your attention. In terms of investment performance, um, we know that this was a difficult year for the fund, with most investments delivered negative actual returns. The only positive return on investment was uh, produced by the um, Goldman Sachs real estate mandate. However, it did not match the industry benchmark and its target and fell nearly four percentage points short. We visualized the investment mandates performance in the bubble scatter graph in Exhibit 6. I think the one, the only thing I think may be helpful to point out here is that the different sizes of the bubbles show the size of that particular investment mandate. So this may help you visualize the impact that each mandate has on the fund, depending on the performance it delivers. 
Um, sec section four on vision, leadership and governance. Our work in this area concluded that you have appropriate governance arrangements in place, which is good to see. This is important because these arrangements support effective scrutiny, challenge and decision making. On climate change, we know that you have no explicit climate strategy, but based on the information we gathered during the audit, it is clear that you are committed to ensuring the investment strategy and consistent with achieving the goal of global net zero emissions but by 2050. The last section, uh, section five in our report covering use of resources to improve outcomes. Again, we concluded that you have appropriate and effective arrangements for monitoring and reporting performance, but I, we identified one improvement in relation to reporting of the um, key performance indicators for the administrative function. We recommended that you provide the extent to, we, to which uh, levels of performance set out in the pension administration strategy have been achieved. This will also ensure compliance with Regulation 55 of LGPS Scotland 2018 regulation. Lastly, we concluded that you have adequate arrangements in place for scrutinizing investment management expenses. And at the very end of our report uh, is Appendix 1, which is our action plan containing the two recommendations we identified this year and have already discussed, as well as the update on each of the prior year recommendations. And I think I'll stop here and happy to take any questions. But before that, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Brian and the whole team, Stuart and Tracy, their team, anyone else who engaged with us during the audit process. We appreciate it was challenging for you, given the timing. But I think we worked well together to, to deliver this audit and that was much appreciated. Thank you. Great, thank you Vujic for that presentation. Um, do any members of questions on the, the accounts or anything for Bodies? Uh, I see, is that George? Yes, thanks for check for that presentation. Just one question on uh, the members reducing. Do you think that the fund should be looking to stabilise that or, or increase the membership if there's no enough uh, members paying into the scheme? I think what what it shows really is is just it highlights the importance of of your investment income and and that's that you know it links also to to the point we highlighted that it's good that you have now the cash flow statement uh, sorry the cash flow projection which can show you the position of the fund going forward um the, your question may be more appropriate uh, directed to the officers of of the fund to to consider that to be fair um, at the moment, I just thought it's worth highlighting for your attention, specifically for that purpose to consider to consider the options here. Um, I, I appreciate this may not fully answer your question, um, but I don't think there is uh, any immediate, uh, you know, need to to like we said to change investment strategy or anything like that. But the cash flow statement is uh, exactly, you know, for that purpose, to sh so you could monitor that position and how the levels are changing. Sorry, I, I hope that that's no, that's uh, that's fine. Enough. by check, yeah, that's perfect. Tracy, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, yeah um, thank you. The, the fund profile, um, George, hasn't largely changed over the you know, over the last sort of 10 years. We are a maturing fund, um, we we are getting new members in, but it, we are maturing at the same time. We're largely driven by our employers. So whilst we're getting new members coming in, the volume of new members um, is not as much as what um, people Believe are retiring. Us, yeah. yeah, that and that's a fact of life and but that's something that, that we take into consideration when we're setting the investment strategy you know in in line with our funding strategy so that we ensure that we have enough money to pay benefits and um, at the sort of macro level look at are we invested in the right things to you know to achieve what we need to to achieve to pay benefits 
happy. Thanks, Tracy. Kenny, you've got a couple of questions. I do, thank you. Yeah, first one's really just a, a point of clarification, really. In the action plan, both of the current year recommendations have got a, a date of 30th of June 23 against them. Um, I wonder if that should be 24 because it's talking about the current financial year. Um, so that, that's that's clarification one. Um, the second one is to do with uh, the member training. The recommendation talks about developing individual member training needs assessments and personal development plans for all subcommittee and board members. I'm not aware of that happening, but the, the recommendations mark is complete. Is there a bit more information on that? Tracy? That's a, something that's got to be done within this financial year. So it, it, you you will be getting these out in the new year. Um, um, whilst, you know, there'll be generic training for people, there will be individual specifics in different areas where, you know, people may feel that they need um, additional training. OK, um, so if there's no other questions or comments, thank Wojish and um, I'm assuming we're approving all these papers for item six. Yeah, yeah, convener, thanks very much. Yeah, the, that covers external auditor's report and it may be that the, um, the officers may have some introduction to make to item 6A and 6B, the Teesside Pension Fund and also the annual report and accounts. I believe Paul Thompson may introduce that and bring in our officers accordingly. Paul, you got anything you need to say? No, nothing to add, convener. OK, so I think that's item six approved then. Yep, I appreciate that. Thanks very much, uh, convener. Those three items being agreed. Item seven then before his annual Treasury Management Activity Report. This is for noting. Any questions or comments on item seven? Seeing anything, so I'm taking that as approval. Okay, thank you very much then, convener. Item eight then is a proposed timetable of meetings for 2024. This is for approval. Again, I'm not seeing any comments or queries on that. Taking that as approved. Okay, thank you very much. With that item being ag agreed, it then takes short the remaining items are confidential and the committee subcommittee may just agree to exclude the press and public to allow these to be considered in private. Yes, we'll agree to that. Okay, thank you very much. On that basis, I can ask if any members of the press or public are present if they could leave the meeting at this moment in time. 